At this point, it's time to glue our uh, W2 and W3 down onto the W1 pink frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue it down, and we're going to line up the back corners back here. And we're going to make sure that those line up. And basically, the front edge of your stone should just about line up with the uh, uh, the cut, oh, cut of your opening right there. That should pretty much be a flush line. When you glue it, be sure that you put a good good bead of glue across here because once we pour our water effects in, we don't want them kind of drizzling down in and maybe coming out the sides. So when you glue that in place, uh, go ahead and glue it straight. Keep in mind, this is after all of the stone has been painted. We are going to go back and we are going to paint the ground, but we're going to do that after we've glued this together. Now we're going to go ahead and do the water. I won't go into too much detail because I've done it other places on the website, so this is just a quick review. Basically, I have some strips of foam and I've covered them with uh, pieces of this plastic strapping tape. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put it against the side and I'm going to pin it into place. Then I'm going to uh, seal the edges with epoxy. So I've got these uh, sort of uh, long pins here. So what you want to do is be sure it covers the front completely and go ahead and take the pin and, and stuff them through at uh, just certain angles here. And this will hold it into place temporarily so that we can seal the edge with epoxy so our uh, Envirotex light uh, clear casting plastic for water doesn't go leaking all down the through. If I got a little extra tape hanging off the end, you know, that I don't want, I can always just take a pair of scissors and kind of kind of nip it off so it's nice and straight. And we'll pin that, and we'll do that to the other side as well. Next, we're going to mix up some epoxy here to uh, five minute epoxy to fill in the gaps around here because there are a few gaps, and this uh, Envirotex is going to run out. I prefer this stuff. This is Quick Cure 5. I don't know who makes it exactly, uh, but it's instead of those syringe things, it's actually in two bottles. This stuff stays liquid longer. Uh, it's easy to mix up, it's easy to dispense, and you know, I, I don't know that I'm ever going back to those uh, double syringe things. This, this just seems to work really nice. So, we're going to mix up a bunch here. We're going to go probably about that much. Uh, that's probably about a, not quite a tablespoon. Uh, once you mix it up, you know you got five minutes, so, uh, or actually probably closer to three minutes. So you don't want to mix up too much at a time. You're not going to be able to use it before it hardens. So you want equal parts of A and equal parts of B. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to start mixing this around. And I'd mix it around for probably about, you know, 30 seconds or so is fine. Just get a really good mix. This stuff uh, mixes up pretty, pretty well. Now if you remember, we just kind of taped a little piece of paper down in the bottom here. So we want to be sure that we seal this hole pretty well. And, you know, also this crack going up the side. See that crack going up the side right there? That may be a slot that goes deeper than you expect. And we don't want our Envirotex light leaking out there. So be sure to go around all the way around the outside edges of the hole. Be sure we got a good, uh, a good seal around the outside. And when you put epoxy up on the sides, we're going to kind of fill this gap between the uh, uh, packaging tape and the, and the rock here. Be sure that you go all the way up the side uh, where this rock face is, because you're not really sure how deep your water is going to end up being. And then at the very corner, I would go underneath the edge face of the rock here just a little bit like this. Because, you know, I think it's going to be glued good, but just right under the edge of that rock is an you know, an escape route of it going out between layers of foam so just to be safe I'm just going to go right in front of the rock there as well and of course don't uh, don't forget your corners here your corners have to be sealed really well so get a good bead in the corner and get it up a little higher than you think it might uh, it might need there and we're going to go ahead and spread that around and we're going to head and do both corners that way as well and you'll probably have to mix up epoxy again because this stuff's going to be hardened up by the time that you uh, by the time you get through this here. Now, before we go any further, uh, go ahead at this point. We're going to move this up and set yourself a trash bag or something on your table surface. Uh, we're going to be pouring water into here, but you know when we get everything set up and kind of balanced the right way. Uh, you want to, uh, you know, go ahead and have this thing down under there so you don't have to mess everything up by lifting it up. 
And I'd like you to be able to understand the position of things uh, before we actually pour our water in. These, uh, what we have is we have the uh, rock support that's going to go somewhere about here. We have the water wheel that's going to go down in the water right here. And then we're going to pour the water in. And that's just going to glue everything in place once we pour the water in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and poke that beam through the hole there and let this wheel uh, set right into place right here. Now here's a close-up of how the water wheel sets in. A couple of things. First, it makes no difference exactly where this water wheel sits. Whether it sets closer up or further back or further away or closer to the house, it's not going to make any difference because you're not going to see where this beam is pressed against the house. Uh, it's going to be hidden by the wheel itself. So it doesn't matter where the position of it is. Now there are a couple of things you have to keep in mind when we put this in. Number one, remember that we're going to have to put our house in here and take it back out. Now did you see how that beam moved the rock arch out a little bit once I set this house here? And then I'm going to have to move this house back out and I'm going to have to set this house back in. I would set the house back in place right here where it's supposed to be and then you're probably going to have to adjust this rock support away a little bit from the outside of the house and move this beam out a little bit because when you move this house out and set it back and move it out and set it back you don't want to be constantly hitting this beam. You want the beam to be about an eighth inch away from the house so what I would do is I would set the house in Make sure it's in position and make sure that beam has a little bit of clearance between it and the side of the house. So we're going to go ahead and position this beam out a little bit. If you have trouble reaching it, you know, you can take a ruler between here and kind of shove that beam out. Be sure that you've got at least probably an eighth inch of space between that beam and that house. Most likely you're going to have to move this rock, uh, rock support a little further away from the house than you had imagined at first. So we're probably going to have to move that away from the house a little bit in order to get the distance that we need between the beam and the house. That looks nice and comfortable. That looks to be, although I don't think you can see because there's not enough light. Let me get the, the weight. There we go. You can see that we've got about an eighth inch between uh, the beam. Now what we want to do is we want to be sure that that beam is straight. And it looks like to uh, get that beam straight, I'm going to have to move this rock piece back a little bit. Okay. Okay. So that looks just about right, right there. Now the question is, is how much space do I have between the wheel and the house? It looks like I've got a big gap here and a small gap here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to move the wheel, lift it up, and then position it. That wheel is kind of sticking into the epoxy. My epoxy wasn't quite cured yet. That may give me a little bit of a problem. Let's lift that wheel up. And I'm going to move that wheel in a little bit. There we go. Now let's move that beam back where it's supposed to be. Come on, come on. Now this you'll have to work with a little bit to try to try to finagle this into uh, into the right spot. Okay, okay. Now I've wiggled it a bit, and it looks like I still got the eighth inch between the beam and the side of the house, and I've got my wheel moved this way a little bit. And my rock support looks like it needs to twist just a little bit, kind of like that to be straight with the side. Okay, it looks like everything lines up good. Now the last thing that you're going to check and see is it looks to me like the wheel is kind of going downhill. It looks like this side is lower than this one. It's kind of tilted like that. And I'm not really sure that I want it tilted like that. So what we can do is we can fix that. Now that we've got the beam where we want it, and we've got the distances to where we want them, I'm going to very carefully remove the side of the house. And at this point I want to lift this beam up a little bit to kind of straighten this wheel. So one thing that you can do is you can take like a piece of uh, uh, mat board, or uh, this is a piece of uh, foam core board, and I'm just going to put it under there. And you know, to kind of hold it in place, I'm just going to stick a little piece of tape on it like this. That's going to hold it in place. Now that really didn't lift it up any, did it? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully lift this up and I'll put a piece of mat board and look at it. Okay, does that look straight? 
Well, that looks better. Uh, from your view of the camera, you may not, you know, I think I'm going to go one more. There. Now, to me, that looks like it's straight. I'm going to skip forward in time here to mention one thing that I neglected to see after I did this. Um, there's two ways you can put your wheel in. You can put it in this way, or you can spin it around and put it the other way. And you'd think it really wouldn't make any difference. But, I had meant to turn my wheel around the other way. Because one side of these planks does not have texture, and the other, size, and the other side does. I was hoping from that this angle I would see boards on this side rather than the other side because if you look at the wheel from the other side I get to see mostly the uh, mostly the uh, textured sides of the planks going up and this side of the house isn't going to be viewed quite as much as the other side so uh, because this so much of the wheel is exposed I wish I had turned this wheel around so that you see more of the planks now we're going to go ahead and mix up our Envirotex. I've got Envirotex light, part A and part B. I've got my reusable measuring cup and I've got my other cups that will slide inside of it. I'm also going to use food coloring once again to uh, color, the, uh, color the water. And for food coloring I need green, I need blue, and I need red. Now in mixing this up I would like to avoid air bubbles as much as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir it, but I'm not going to stir it violently. I'm going to stir it slowly and I'm going to do it for a long time, probably five minutes. Also when you're mixing it you may want to take and lean your cup to the side like this and try to get down in there so that you can uh, and then also rotate the cup a little bit as you're going. We want to be sure that whatever's in the bottom get mixed up towards the top. Now whatever surface you pour this into, it's probably a good idea to make sure that that surface is fairly level. Uh, I would put a level on the table just to, just to make sure. Okay, we've got our uh, Envirotex mixed up for a good five minutes uh, at a reasonable, uh, a reasonable rate. And you see we've got uh, quite, a few, uh, quite a few bubbles in the mix here. Uh, that's okay, that will start coming to the surface. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pour this in, double check to make sure that nothing is moved, that your wheel is still set where you want it, that your, your rock, you know, double check everything, because once you pour this in, you're not going to be, you're not going to be able to go back. I had calculated when I uh, uh, did this, uh, the amount of uh, uh, liquid uh, that little hole that's in the bottom that the uh, wheel sets down into will actually take about three ounces of material. That hole will eat up about three ounces of this uh, Envirotex uh, material. Okay, a half hour has gone by and really most of the bubbles are gone at this point. There are a few. Usually you'll notice them sort of collecting around the edge here. Uh, if you have air bubbles uh, collecting around the edge, you can just kind of take your... Uh, a brush, you know, the handle of a brush and kind of kind of push through them like that and that will tend to break most of those bubbles. This is still very liquidy and it should stay liquidy for quite a while.